it, first we'll have Evangelist Keisha White, then Minister Gary Freeman, Evangelist Vicki Adams, Elder Corey McNeil, Evangelist Joyce Lyon, and Minister Donnie Wright. Clap your hands for they, as they come in that order. Amen. Bless the Lord, everybody. Everybody shout with me. Get up, say something, and do something. Yes, we live in America. It's the land of the free and the home of the brave. The place where opportunity is given to all. Isn't it amazing that Americans, especially African Americans, those that had the markings of doom and gloom because of the color of their skin. Yes, I'm talking about black folk. We've moved from the agitations of slavery, working, from the, working for the other man on the hill to living beside him. We've moved from our little shack churches that bruised our knees because of the broken down plywood to luxurious worship temples with everything in it from banquet halls, classrooms, padded seats, and carpeted floors. Education is now unlimited. We have retirement plans. We shop where we want. We vacation where and when we want, and we eat very well. Christians in America no longer have to hide to read their Bible. The Word of God is right at their very fingertips. Yes, we in America are blessed, but I wonder sometimes if our creature comforts are becoming Coming a curse to us with all the blessings we witness less we minister less we worship less we attend service more grudgingly and we give more sparingly but we love ourselves more America is immoral the and the ethical decline is rampant we are steadily pushing Jesus at the out the back door of society yes we have more than we ever had yet we become a people of complacency. Someone has got to get up, do something, and say something, and carry the burden for souls before our nation be destroyed. We find out while reading the book of Amos that the attitude of complacency is not new. The people of Israel at one point in time responded in the same manner. Amos addressed Israel's two primary sins, the first being the absence of true worship. They were not pursuing the Lord with their whole hearts. The second being a lack of justice. They were not following the Lord's standard of justice by not being concerned of the well-being of their neighbors. They were living a plenteous life of luxury and ease. The leaders of Samaria, even while thinking themselves secure, stood doomed, doomed for their rejection of the Lord and his ways. They had no fear and their dedication to Christ was decreasing. The people of Israel felt that they were the greatest nation on earth. Uh, that sounds familiar. We think, the Americans think that we are the greatest nation on earth. But what made America so great at one point in time was that Christ was the center. It was the new, he was the nucleus of our nation's affections. But we see it every day. Every day we see that people are concerned about material possessions, money, the pleasures of this world. Unfortunately, that spirit of the world has crept into our churches. My God, are we no longer concerned about the souls of dying men and women? Are we at ease in Zion with all the comforts and luxuries of life? Have we become a thoughtless generation, not concerned of the miseries and the poverty of others? Too many Christians are laughing when they should be weeping, according to James 4. They're tolerating sin when they should be opposing it, according to 1 Corinthians I ask you tonight, who will rise up and warn our communities that damnation is coming? See, the world and the church have become delusional. In Amos chapter 6, they thought that their prestige, their possessions, and their power would spare them from the judgment of God. But God is going to judge us for our complacency in him. Who will help us move? Move from the place of complacency to the place of command command compassion and compel men 
and women to come to Christ. Well, the Lord in Amos raised up a little sheep herd, a keeper of a sycamore groves named Amos toward Israel. Amos, whose name meant burden of the Lord, was called to admonish the children of Israel concerning their apostasy. Now, I'm so glad that you don't have to be somebody for Jesus to use you. I don't know tonight what the meaning of your birth name is, but when you gave your heart to the Lord, your name changed to a saint of God. Now, that means you are called to carry the burden. How can we as Christians sit back on our covered decks while false preachers and teachers are deceiving people for monetary gain? How can we as Christians sit by and let our nations be destroyed and not say one word. I'll tell you why. Because we become ease in Zion. I want you to know that your job is to be an ambassador for Jesus. Your job is to witness for him. Hallelujah. Listen, your job just doesn't end with you coming to every prayer meeting. Your job doesn't end with you ushering at the door. Your job, it doesn't end was you even preaching right here at the desk hallelujah but your job your duty your compelling is for you to win souls for Christ see one day God is going to judge us all we're going to be judged on what we did for Christ and what we did to Christ hallelujah let me say that again we're going to be judged by what we did for Christ and what we did to him did we win souls for him or did we defile his name I want Jesus to say when he look at me he's gonna say Keisha you got up you did something and you said something if you want Jesus hallelujah to say well done to you today give God a prize listen hallelujah Time is winding up. Time is winding up. There's no time for us to go past the little girl on the corner without stopping. Hallelujah. There's no time for us to go past the little boy. Hallelujah. On the street corner. Because one day, Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. Clap your hands for him and give God the praise. Don't clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we just going to keep going. Somebody scream in the house, beware of the state of ease. Amos was a vigorous spokesman for God, for God's justice and righteousness. Amos declared that God was going to judge his unfaithful, disobedient, covenant-breaking people. Despite the Lord's special choice of Israel and his kindness to her during the Exodus and even the days of David and Solomon, his people continually failed to honor and obey him. The shrines at Bethel and other places of worship were often paganized, and Israel had a worldly view of even the ritual that the Lord himself had prescribed. They thought performance of the rites was all God required, and with that done, they could do whatever they pleased without commitment to God's law. They had no basis for standards of conduct. So here in Amos chapter 6 and verse 1, careless sinners across Israel are in trouble. But in verse 1, we specifically see what Amos is speaking to the people of Zion. Those people dwelling in Zion, they were vainly confident and abusing their privileges. These people were imminent, they were in imminent danger, but yet considered themselves people of God. Those that dwelt in Zion thought that the act of just dwelling in Zion was honor and protection enough. They believed that their prestige came from their association with Israel, bringing them upon the mindset of ease. We know as believers, if God blesses us with material blessings and things of that nature, that what truly matters is our association with Jesus Christ. Our walk with Christ in anticipation of heaven is the very meaning of the relationship we hold with Jesus Christ. 
at any point we find ourselves at ease in doing kingdom work. We find ourselves waiting to be ensnared by the wiles of the enemy. The word ease here in the very first clause, it carries so much weight because it seems to fit the description of the churches in our day and time. Then in that time and place in Zion, they were in a state of ease towards the God of the Bible. Like Zion, we see in our churches relying on bounty and material gains instead of reaching for souls and gaining lives for the kingdom. Listen to me. It seems as if we're walking in a sense of complacency instead of walking in a state of emergency. Who would have thought? I had to hear. I had to speak with a friend of mine on the other day. She works in the, in, in, in the, in the youth department in another church, uh, and she was telling me, and this thing shook me to my core. She told me that in their youth department, they're going to start promoting and practicing safe sex tactics to teach their youth. I had to end the conversation right there because the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 6 and 18 to flee fornication. Who would have thought that in this day and age... Uh, we would be a people uh, that would try to teach and promote safe sex tactics. Uh, when the Bible tells us clearly to flee fornication, uh, who would have thought uh, that to preach against the, against the sins of the world uh, and, against, and against people going to hell out of the pulpit would be considered hate speech. Uh, the church considers this hate speech now, uh, and it's not even coming. Uh, from those that are inside the church. It's coming from the outside and the inside. Who would have thought that in Christ, in the service of Christ, we see preachers and we see pastors that are in direct opposition of the issues of the God of the Bible that God declared as wrong and sinful. All of these things have brought the gospel of Jesus Christ to a state of ease in our society. Well, I heard the Bible say, yes, Lord, in Proverbs 16 and 26, he that laboreth, laboreth for himself, for his mouth craveth it for him. Our appetite has to be driven in a sense that knowing what God has done for us and what he will yet do for us, knowing that Jesus is still in the saving business, should make us hunger and taste after seeing people set free, people saved, people delivered. And Amos said, woe unto them who are at ease in Zion. Woe meaning sorrow. Woe meaning grief. Woe meaning misfortune. And I'm here to tell you on tonight, I wish I had about ten folk in here who said they are not going to rest in a state of ease. For it will be woe unto those that are in a state of ease. We don't have woe. We walk in victory. We walk in victory. We walk in victory. We walk in victory. And with that being said, all the things that we have going, we need Jesus. We need Jesus in every state of mind. We need Jesus in everything that we do. God is here for us. God is here for us. We have to reach out. We have to get up and do something. We got to get out this state of ease. I wish I had uh, 10 folks on tonight uh, who said, uh, I'm not uh, going to walk uh, in a state of ease. Uh, I'm going to chase after God. Uh, I'm going to run after the things of Christ. Uh, I will uh, run for God. Uh, I will uh, do the things for God. Uh, I will uh, trust in him. Uh, and we will. Uh, we will win uh, because we serve uh, the almighty God. Uh, we serve uh, the one who is, uh, that is to come, uh, that is here now, uh, that is in this place, uh, even as we speak, because uh, he gives us power, uh, power, uh, power, uh, power, uh, power, uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, somebody clap your hands uh, and give God praise. Uh, clap your hands uh, if you believe uh, you're going to walk in the things of Christ. Uh, Clap your hands if you believe what Jesus told you. Clap your hands if you believe what he spoke to you through the man of God. Somebody in here believe that we will come out of a state of ease. God is blessing. God is keeping. And you have to believe it. Beware of the state of ease. 